Alhamdulillah, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na bima alamtana. Tayyip, today inshallah will be the first of a series that we hope to undertake with Allah's permission, which is going to be covering Islamic manners, adab al-Islamiyya wa khuluq al-Islamiyya, speaking about the mannerisms and morals and etiquettes that are found in the books of Islam pertaining to this topic vast topic it's a topic which is very vast uh, but however it's so important because everything that we learn with regards to good manners has a connection to our faith it improves our faith as we will come to know and that it improves how we interact with other Muslims which is something which is ever so important and it's beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have good manners and we have good etiquettes and it's not something which is easy to do it takes a lot of effort so the first and foremost step would be of course to learn about what is good manners, what are the etiquettes pertaining to interacting with different Muslims and what are the, some of the manners that we have regarding reciting the Quran, regarding our relationship with Allah, with the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what are the manners and etiquettes that we have when we visit people, uh, when we eat, when we go to the bathroom, so many of those things as well as what are the manners and characteristics that we should adorn ourselves with as a Muslim from the bravery, from um, intellect, from speaking well, from dressing in an Islamic manner and so many other things that we hope to cover inshallah with Allah's permission. In any case, to start with the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمِ الْأَخْلَاقِ that verily I was sent only to perfect good character. That's one way of translating it. That verily I was only sent the major point of my mission was sent be, me being sent to perfect good character and to complete good morals so one may obviously understand from the hadith the first understanding is that good manners in Islam and etiquettes and morals are something of great importance without a doubt the, the hadith clearly shows that but a thought may come to your mind and hopefully it does come to your mind that here the Prophet ﷺ is alluding to a point which is that the only matter that he was sent for was to perfect good manners and good morals then how does that conflate how does that how do we fit that and understand with the fact that the prophet sallallahu was sent to establish the worship of allah allah says in the quran wa jinna wal insa illa i did not create the jinn or mankind except that allah be worshiped and in other verses in the quran wa laqad ba'athna fi kulli ummatin rasulan an ya'budullaha wa tajtanibu tagut we sent to every nation a messenger that they should worship Allah alone and turn away and disassociate from everything which is taken as lords and gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so how do we understand the two here we know that we should have Tawheed as the primary objective singling out Allah alone giving him his rights and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also we have the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying that the, the major objective of his mission of his da'wah was to establish and perfect good character well, of course, good character is not to be understood as being only amongst creation. It's also with our creator first and foremost. Good character is to have good character with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Tawheed, to worship Him alone. And to ensure that, sorry, and to ensure that the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped alone, and that we have correct belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that we have correct worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is good manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more one refines his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or her belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding tawheed and having correct aqeedah, correct beliefs and regarding how they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this will translate and transfer onto how that person then deals with the creation. So the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu that I was only sent to perfect and to complete good character and good morals is looked upon in this way also that Allah has rights upon us that we have good manners with him by establishing the correct belief and establishing correct worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then that will lead us to have good character and morals with the rest of the creation another way to look at it this hadith that I mentioned is to understand that good character worship and belief is not something really that the people will see from us they don't see our beliefs that we hold within they don't see much of our worship either because much of that is done in private but they do see how we interact with people how we interact with uh, each other 
like the good character that is required for how we interact. That's why the Prophet ﷺ made it such an important thing that we have good morals and good etiquettes because we're always interacting with the creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for the Muslim society and the Muslims wherever they be to interact with one another upon the best of character and also interact with others who are non-Muslims upon the best of character for reasons of calling them to Islam, etc. That's why you find throughout history, many parts of the world, they became Muslim, though there was never ever any military expedition. Never was there a military that set foot on those lands, the Muslim uh, conquest or Muslim military, Mujahideen. Not as many in the West, they claim that Islam was spread by the sword. Rather, if you look to Indonesia, for example, which has over 200 and something million believers, it's never found in history that Muslim army set foot on that land. Rather, it was through the interaction with people who went there for trade, Muslims who went there for trade. They saw in them good manners. They saw in them honesty. They saw in them that they were just. They saw in them that they were principled people. And they saw that this was something that we should accept as a way of life. So having good manners shows people that shows people the beauty of Islam, that through our manners we reflect the beauty of Islam. And not only do we live in harmony with other Muslims and non-Muslims due to the good manners and morals that we have, but it's a way of calling them to Islam. It's a way of showing them that what we follow as a way of life is something which is beautiful. That's why our manners should be as loud as our words, if not louder. You find, for example, the Prophet ﷺ, when it was mentioned in the Qur'an, in Surah to shuara وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَابِينَ The Prophet ﷺ was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to call out to and to give dawah to your close clan and to your close relatives, to your close tribal people. So when this was given to the Prophet ﷺ as a command, the Prophet ﷺ, he stood upon Mount Safa and he started to call out to the different clans and different tribes of the Quraysh, to his people basically, his close people. And he said to them, after Abu Lahab had come and the Quraysh had come, the Prophet ﷺ said, أَرَأَيْتَكُمْ لَوْ أَخْبَرْتُكُمْ أَنَّ خَيْلًا بِالْوَادِي تُرِيدُ أَن تُغِيرَ عَلَيْكُمْ What is your position if I was to tell you, O oh people, that behind this valley or over this mountain there is an enemy that is about to attack you and I have knowledge of this? What would be your position? أَكُنْتُمْ مُصَدِّقِيَّ Are you to believe me? They said, Naam. They said, of course, O Messenger of oh, oh, Muhammad Sallallahu this was before they accepted him as a messenger. Of course, O oh, Muhammad, Ma jarabna alayka illa sidqan. We never found you except to be a person of truth. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Fa inni nadirun lakum bayna yaday adabin shadeed. Verily know that I am sent to you as a warner before the extreme punishment of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala descends. So they knew the Prophet ﷺ to be a truthful person. They knew the Prophet ﷺ was not a person that would lie or cheat or any of these things. So when the Prophet ﷺ came to call the people to Islam, they knew that he had good manners and this good manners, it must mean that what he is calling to is also true and full of goodness. So good manners is extremely important for the fact that we need to interact with each other in a harmonious way and we need to call other people to Islam. And also having good manners, it raises one in rank and with rewards with regards to his relationship or her relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said in the hadith in Tirmidhi, ma ahadun lillahi illa rafa'ahullah. That nobody causes themselves to have humility and to be humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises that person in reward and in rank. So here we have clearly the hadith is telling us that the more you have from good manners, which is humility is a huge part of good manners, you're humble, you're not arrogant, you're not boastful, you're not one of those loud people, you're rather somebody who's humble for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then due to this your rewards are increased and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes you to be raised in rank in this life and the next. So good manners has an impact directly on our rewards. The Prophet ﷺ also said in the hadith, collected by Imam Ahmad and authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani ta'ala and others inna al-mu'min la yudrik bi husni khuliqihi darajatu sa'im al-qa'im and this was narrated and collected by Imam Ahmad and Abu Dawood that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna al-mu'min la yudrik bi husni khuliqihi darajatu sa'im al-qa'im that verily and certainly the believer reaches the levels of the one who is continually praying and the one who is continually fasting due to him or her having good character. 
So when you strive hard to learn good character and you strive hard to implement it daily in your life, you also get the reward of that extra optional deed of somebody who's praying the optional prayers regularly, somebody who's fasting regularly, you get that reward also through good manners. And as we know to fast is not something which is easy, to do the optional fasts regularly and to do optional prayers regularly is something which is not easy. Therefore, likewise, to establish yourself upon good character often and continually is not something which is easy. However, the rewards for it are immense, as just mentioned in this hadith. But sadly, the opposite to that is true, that many people, instead of getting reward, they lose a lot of their rewards and they increase in sin through having bad manners. When they interact with people, they're lying, they're cheating, they're not looking out for the best interests of people, they harm them physically or mentally, and they're harsh towards people, and they always rush to being angry instead of gentle, etc., etc. And there's plenty lying and cheating taking place in society. All of this is something which removes the reward, as we come to know in the hadith mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, Atadruna malil muflis. Do you know and understand who is the bankrupt person? They said, Al muflisu fina man la dirham lahu wa la mata. They said, The companions, the bankrupt person amongst us is the one that doesn't have any dirham, any money, nor does he have any mata any like worldly possessions. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna al-muflis min ummati man ata yawm al-qiyamati bi salatin wa siyamin wa zakatin that very the muflis, the real bankrupt person from my nation is the one that comes on the day of judgment. And this person has prayers and he has fasted and he has given zakat. However, قَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا وَقَدَفَ هَذَا وَأَكْلَ مَا لَهَذَا وَضَلَبَ هَذَا وَسَفَكَ دَمَّ هَذَا but however, this person, though they did prayers and they gave zakah and they fasted, however, they spoke ill of a particular person. They ridiculed a particular person, for example. They backbit a particular person and they took the wealth of a particular person unlawfully. Or they sp spilled spilt the blood of a particular person unlawfully or they hit somebody unlawfully. So all of these deeds causes the person to lose their good deeds. How? فَيُؤْتَى مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ فَيُؤْتَى حَادَ مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَيُؤْتَى حَادَ مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ So on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, would cause judgment to take place. That this person, though they fasted and they gave zakah, etc., etc., and they prayed, but because they wronged so many people on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take from the good deeds of that, of that person and spread it amongst the people that that person wronged either by their tongue or by their hands or in any way, shape or form that they had wronged. And then the hadith goes on and it says that these deeds will be distributed, the good deeds of this person will be distributed, okay? فَإِنْ فُنْيَتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُقْتَمَ عَلَيْهِ However, if his good deeds or her good deeds are finished before the recompense is given to all those people that were wronged, then what happens? Look at this dangerous thing. Then in this situation, the evil and bad deeds of the person, the, of the people that were wronged, will be taken from them and put upon this person. So not only did they take from his good deeds, but if there wasn't enough for the recompense, then they would take from their bad deeds and give to this person. And then this person would have no good deeds and so many bad deeds upon him, and he or she will be thrown into the hellfire. And this hadith was in Sahih Muslim. So the hadith is showing us clearly that how important it is that we refine our character and that we always think about the way we behave with regards to the people around us, whether they are close relatives or distant relatives or strangers or people that we work with, people that we interact with. How are we with people? We have to force ourselves to be people of truth, to be people of justice, to be people of good manners, to be people of courage and all of these other beautiful manners that we need to implant implement because if we are a people that are always lying always cheating always angry always harming other people in one way or the other it's going to come back to us on the day of judgment we think that we we, we are getting away with it but it's not it's being written down in the book of deeds and people are going to be taken to account for the way that they interact with others on the day of judgment there was a woman the prophet ﷺ mentions and in, in the hadith of ibn habban and Imam Ahmed, also authenticated by Shaykh al-Abani, that this woman, she was mentioned to the Prophet ﷺ that she would fast all night long, 
uh, sorry, pray all night long and that she would fast and she would give in charity and she would do lots of good deeds. However, she would speak bad about her neighbors, all right? She would harm her neighbors with her tongue, maybe backbiting about them, spreading gossip about them, etc., or spreading their secrets. So the Prophet said, لا خير فيها هي من أهل النار. This person, she has no good in her, rather, she's going to be from the people of the hellfire. So, though she did all those good deeds of praying and fasting and staying up at night, but because she spoke bad about her neighbors and she spread gossip about her neighbors and she harmed her neighbors with her tongue, then this person, the Prophet said, there is no good in this person, rather, this person is going to be in the hellfire. And it's very, we have to be very careful with regards to our neighbors. How do we interact with our neighbors? I used to live in a compound when I lived in a Muslim country and in that compound the, the culture would be that the children would be let out and they could make as much noise as they wanted, make as much rubbish as, as they wanted and that's all well and good to an extent but when it comes to the point that you're now harming your neighbor who's trying to sleep early so they can get up for Qiyam al-Layl or go to work the next morning or the neighbor is always out every day picking up the rubbish that is left behind uh, from the children, uh, maybe the children are harming the car etc etc when they play. So all of this is harmful to the neighbor and it's a very dangerous situation. Why? Apart from the hadith that we just took, there was another hadith, Mutafaqun alayhi in Bukhari and Muslim, where the Prophet swore three times. He said, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min. He said, I swear by Allah, the person doesn't believe. And he said this three times. The companions, they said, Man ya Rasulullah, who is this that you are talking about? The Prophet said, Alladhi la ya'mal jaruhu bawa'iqahu that the one who doesn't keep his or her neighbor safe from their harms okay so they can be direct harms from yourself as a as an adult or could be, it could be harms from the children that are under your care so we have to be extremely careful with regards to our mannerisms and our morals pertaining to how we interact with the neighbors do we park in their spaces when we're not supposed to do we leave rubbish outside their house do we play loud we shouldn't be listening to music anyway do we have loud sounds in the house at times when people are um, maybe going to sleep do we any type of harm we shouldn't be doing towards our neighbors because it's something that the prophet said that the person who believes cannot be behaving in such a manner so we have to be extremely careful with regards to our mannerisms in particular to our neighbors <clears throat> so when a person continually strives to learn and to implement because why I say continually strive because it's something that you have to battle yourself with from moment to moment because you may be having a good day but then all of a sudden you're put in a bad mood for a particular reason now how is your mannerisms and how is your good conduct going to be in that situation with regards to other people is it just because you are having a bad situation that now you feel that that you have the right to harm other people with your tongue or with your hands or with your behavior no at each stage of the day at each moment in life we have to battle the soul to ensure that we are trying to interact with people with good mannerisms and good conduct the prophet ﷺ showed us and taught us that the more we have from good morals and good manners the higher our status is going to be in the hereafter the prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in tinmadi إِنَّ مِنْ أَحَبِّكُمْ إِلَيَّ وَأَقْرَبَكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَحَاسِمَكُمْ خُلَقًا أو أَخْلَاقًا That the Prophet ﷺ said that verily the closest of you, that the most beloved of you to me and the closest of you to me in terms of sitting next to me on the Day of Judgment in the hereafter will be the ones of you that have the best character. So the better our character is, the better our morals are, the closer we will be to the Prophet ﷺ in the hereafter and more the Prophet ﷺ would love us. Why? We ask ourselves why? Of course because of all the hadith and the verses of the Qur'an that pertain to encouraging one to have good character. And the first hadith which we took, That verily I have only been sent to perfect and to better good morals and good character. So the more we do of that, then the more we are beloved and closer to the Prophet ﷺ. Because the only ones that can be close to the Prophet ﷺ are those that emulate him more so, right? And he was the best of character and he was the best of examples. Good manners and good conduct and etiquette, it causes the person to have heavy weight in their scales on the Day of Judgment. And this is what it's all about at the end of the day. What is our situation going to be on the Day of Judgment? Are we going to have 
lots of good deeds in our scale, when our, when our deeds are, are weighed, or is our scale going to be light due to the fact that we're very little good deeds and more sins. However, through good character, you gain a lot of good deeds and you gain a heavy weight in your scales, as the Prophet ﷺ said in the Hadith of Tirmidhi and Ibn Habban, authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي الْمِزَانِ أَثْقَلُ مِنْ حُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ That there is nothing which will be heavier on the scale on the Day of Judgment, heavier than good character. So the more we have good character and the more we improve our morals and etiquettes, the more we are going to be safe on the Day of Judgment, inshallah, by Allah's permission. And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned in the hadith that the goal that we are all trying to achieve, which is that we are trying to perfect and better our iman, to have a closer relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the more we want, we strive to have good character, then the more we will be complete in faith, the more we will have complete iman. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, narrated by Tirmidhi and Ahmad, أَكْمُلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْصُنُهُمْ خُلَقًا that the best, that the most complete people in terms of faith are those who are best in good character. And the best of you are the best of those in conduct with their wives and their women folk. So the more you are complete in good character, the more you are complete as a believer. And then the Prophet ﷺ said these important words, And the best of you are the best to their women folk. It doesn't now mean that the women folk don't have to be best to the men folk. No, it works both ways. However, the Prophet ﷺ in this situation was speaking to the men, as in most situations he would be speaking to men. But the rule applies to both men and women. So a person wants to be complete in faith, they have to be complete in good manners also. And also because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned this important point that the best of you are those who are best to their women folk, and it would apply that the best of the women are the best to their men folk, right? So when there's trouble in the house, when there's problems between spouses or, you know, things are not going well, the first thing that should be looked to is that a person's relationship between him and Allah, not directly the relationship between you and your spouse. Because if your relationship is good between you and Allah, you have good iman and good character, then your relationship is going to be good between you and your spouse in most cases. So the first thing we look to when there is a problem between the spouses is we look to the state of the spouses. Are you in servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you striving hard to improve your iman and to have taqwa? If that's the case, then inshallah, your relationship with your spouse and other members of your family will improve because that's the nature of iman and good character. That the more iman and good character you have, obviously, the better you will be in terms of bearing the difficulties of intermixing with your family members. Sometimes somebody may be in a bad mood, but because you've got good iman and you've got good character, you can be flexible at that time and you won't respond in the way that they are talking to you. Because if both people talk to each other harshly, it just increases the tension of that situation. However, if you were to, one of you of iman was to be relaxed and calm and to try to soothe the situation away, then the situation would change very quickly and shaitan wouldn't be able to make it bigger than it is. So all of this returns back to having Iman in Allah, good belief in Allah, and worshipping Allah, and to having good character. That's what makes us a complete believer, and that's what enables us to have good relationships with our women folk, and the women have good relationships with their men folk. The Prophet wasallam said, with regards to good character, and etiquette, and moral conduct, that this will give you a high place in Jannah. Listen to the hadith in Abi Dawood. The Prophet wasallam said, Ala za'imun. I guarantee that this person will have a place in the lower parts of Jannah if they leave alone disputes and quarrelings, quarrelling, even if they were upon the truth. So the Prophet ﷺ said, a person who has the opportunity to quarrel and to dispute because they are upon the truth in this matter, but they leave that alone for the sake of Allah's pleasure, then this person gets a place in the lower parts of Jannah, right? They get a house guaranteed in that part of Jannah. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, That I guarantee that this person will get a place in the middle of Jannah. For who? For the one who leaves alone lying, even if he's joking. That this person 
leaves alone lying even when they are playing around being humorous and joking even when we joke and play around we shouldn't be lying we should stick to the truth and with the house in the highest parts of Jannah for the one who perfects and betters their good their good um, their good manners and conduct so here the Prophet is giving us opportunity to have a place in Jannah if we improve our manners and that is something that we must do and from the best ways to improve our good manners and as we said it's something which is very difficult is that we have to try and be around people of good manners if we are around people of good manners then that will help us to improve our good manners why the Prophet ﷺ said in Tirmidhi المرؤ على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخالل that a person is upon the religion of their friend or companion so be careful who you take as a friend and companion and this is well known prayer pressure societal influences whoever you mix with whatever type of people you mix with they're going to have a direct impact upon your character and the way you behave and the way you talk I remember when we were young we would come home sometime and after having spent time around crazy people we would start talking in a crazy manner and we didn't really know why it was just because we were with the wrong people they would reflect upon us and cause us to act and speak in a bad way however when you spend time with good people they make you think in lofty terms they make you think about having high iman they make you think about having good character they make you from uh, to reapproach to reproach yourself and to look to look inward and to reflect upon your situation in terms of iman and good character and you learn from their good character you see that this person is always forbearing this person is always patient this person always speaks truthfully or speaks with clarity this person always when they speak they speak with the quran and the sunnah this person never cheats this person doesn't worry too much about money this person always reminds you of the hereafter this person always reminds you to be good to your parents and to be good to your spouse and to be good to your children so when you're around good people that's what happens to you you pick up from the good manners of these special people so it's imperative to find companionship of good people especially somebody who's a student of knowledge a sheikh or anybody who has some characteristics which shine out uh, from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love them to have and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Tawbah pertaining to this Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen O you who believe have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be from amongst those be amongst those who are truthful meaning be around those who are truthful because truthful people and people that have taqwa they will give you gifts of good manners and gifts of iman every time you visit them and every time you see them inshallah one should be keen to read and ponder upon the life of the Prophet ﷺ if they want to improve in good manners because Allah says about the Prophet ﷺ in Surah Al-Ahzab لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسْنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا that verily and certainly there is for you in the Prophet ﷺ the best example for the one that is seeking Allah and His pleasure and the hereafter and remembers Allah often so if you want to be from one who is firm upon his journey or her journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we need to look into the seed of the Prophet ﷺ we need to learn how was the Prophet ﷺ's characteristics how was his manners how was his stances and outlook in so many different scenarios and situations right only by carefully studying the life of the Prophet ﷺ are you able to emulate the best of creation the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised his character in the Quran Allah says about the Prophet ﷺ, that you O Muhammad certainly are on a high level of good character so the Prophet ﷺ was praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we want to take from that good character all we have to do is be continual upon listening to the life of the Prophet ﷺ and reading the life of the Prophet ﷺ and reflecting upon how his mannerisms and his character and his stances were and to try to emulate those in our life and that will increase us in good character bi'idhnillahi ta'ala so as we said we're going to be speaking about a variety of morals and good character that we should have and also we'll be talking about etiquettes when we get the chance different etiquettes pertaining to the etiquettes of reciting the Quran etiquettes of going to the bathrooms etiquettes of when you visit somebody etiquettes of visit, visiting the sick etiquettes of visiting scholars uh, and so on and so forth there's so much to take and with Allah's permission inshallah we will benefit 
and allow ourselves step by step, inch by inch to improve our character as that is a lofty goal and that is a goal that we need to strive for bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan. We'll stop here inshallah and we will continue next week. If you have any questions from what we took then feel free.